maybe talk you into sticking around until next year or whatever. I mean, and then through that entire process, we're you kind of like losing guys, and then eventually we end up with a crew of leaders. And this year, the leadership has been better than ever. Better than ever. I mean, how many sophomores are graduating? 13? I mean, no other team has that. I mean, we have freaking more sophomores than freshmen in junior college. That just doesn't happen. And in a place like Oxnard, where people have so much to do in their life, they have so much else they have to have, have handle. Work, family, they have responsibilities. <laughs> anyway, so thank you to you sophomores, and, and let's, let's keep moving. But freshmen, you have some tough shoes to follow, to, to, to get into here. Hopefully you will do a good job. Um, Jaime Alvarado, why don't you come up first? Right. Jaime, Jaime embodies what it means to be a sophomore in this program because you get put through a lot, as much as you, you get put through a lot freshman year. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, like, you know, we, we need you, but we don't really need you because we got such awesome sophomores. And last year we had great sophomores, we had a great team, lots of good things were happening, and I got a stud like Jaime on the bench, coming in, doing a good job, then going out, coming in, doing okay, then going out, playing, scoring, then going out, and, and just always contributing, never complaining, never saying a word, but then kept coming, kept training, kept working, and after a while I started going, well, this guy is consistent. He gets a chance, he'll score. He sees an opportunity, he'll make a great pass. Whoa, he's good defensively. Oh my goodness, he, we can get something out of him. We can get some extra. All of a sudden, we got a freaking starter. All of a sudden, we have a stud. Boom. Right fullback. <laughs> have you ever played right fullback in your life? Uh, left fullback. Left fullback. Well, that's not right fullback when you're left fullback. It's <laughs> <laughs> a whole different story. <laughs> but I'm crazy, and I was like, you know what? I think I like that. And so, boom. Were, were you not perfect? You kept a freshman of the year, Roy Solis, and we just talked about how great he is. You kept him on the bench. You were doing so great that we couldn't find a reason to sub you all year long. You were physically strong enough to freaking last through all the, all of the games, all of the hits, all the things as a defender. You got from our 18-yard box to their 18-yard box, like, how many times a game? How many times a half? I mean, all the time. You were getting up and down, getting up and down. Then, when you got the ball, even though you might have been tired, maybe you've been pushing around, might have been double teams, you never lose it. The worst thing would happen is you would dribble in, and some guy would kick it out, we get another throw, and we have to restart. That was the worst thing. For a guy that wasn't recruited, I don't know how that's possible, by the way. I don't know how you didn't get recruited and how you had to end up at Oxnard instead of UC something because you have excellent grades. Excellent. And I don't know how that happened, but I'm freaking glad. And that is the miracle that is Oxnard College, that I just get all these awesome people and somehow the cracks allow them to slip right into my lap. And so here you are. What's your GPA? 3-2. Three, two. You, and that's 3-2 taking the real classes. You know what I mean? Not like the hello, how are you? <laughs> what, can you write your name down class? No, this is the calculus and these kind of things. They're the kind of classes where Carolyn, the dean, goes, wait, Jaime's in that class? I can't even pass that class. And so you're going to go on to big things. I hope you take your grades and your character and your effort and your strength and all of your talent and push past all of the obstacles and get into a quality university program. I'm here to help you. Brian knows tons of people. I hope we can make it happen where you can get to it and you can make it affordable. You know, and then get a scholarship or financial aid or whatever. And then you can continue to do all of the amazing things that you shocked the world with this year. Because now it's not a shock anymore. Everybody knows you're capable of it. And anytime you have to show any future coach, you can just put on one of Tony's videos and go, boom, this is what I do. This is what I'm capable of. Any side, any position, anywhere, anytime. And if you don't need to play me that day, I will have the best attitude and I'll be fine. And my grades will never slip and I will be awesome. It's a privilege. And the other coaches in the league recognized uh, how lucky I was to have you this year and they voted you first team all conference. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, Danny Pacheco. Danny Pacheco.
Pacheco. What a player. What a player. Okay, so Danny, um, this year, uh, Santa Barbara had an excellent um, right fullback. Yes, remember him, the fast guy? Yeah. Uh, African-American guy who was just blazing up and down the wing. And so I said, I was, I was watching one of their games early in the season with somebody, and they were like, oh, you're going to have to watch that guy. And I wasn't even paying attention to that guy, because I'd already seen that guy in the first couple of minutes, and I go, oh, yeah. And I had already moved on to some of the other things they were doing on set plays and stuff like that. And why wasn't I worried about that guy? Because I go, I'm going to put Danny on. And then it was done. I knew that Danny's work rate and his um, technical ability would neutralize that guy, and we would never, he would never make a difference. No matter how many sprints or how much skill or how speed, how much fast, how much speed he had, didn't matter. And when I write, boom, oh, yeah. stuck him in. And it was the same in every situation, whether you played outside back, outside wing, whatever, boom, wherever you went, every time. When we needed goals early in the season, you scored goals. When we needed you to come off the bench, you came off the bench. When we needed you, wherever, you were perfect. And then you went down recently to uh, some tryouts in Casa San Bernardino, you know, their camps and stuff like that, and then you kicked butt, right? Yeah. All you can do is what you have been doing for two straight years, and that is kick butt. Just keep doing a great job whenever you are called upon to, to sit and go. Unbelievably, this year I had a player of your caliber as a sophomore on the bench sometimes. Unbelievable. That's how good we are. That's how good I am lucky enough to bring you in sometimes off the bench. It's, it's unheard of. And whenever you went in, you freaking played excellent. And it was like having a second Cristiano Ronaldo. I not only had one, I had two. And you were in there and you were doing unbelievable. I know there's big things in your future. You got great grades, you're a good person, and you are probably our fittest guy. You could probably run, you know, so you probably have the best odds of making one of these college teams that just run back and forth all the time, you know what I mean? <laughs> work, 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 work. I mean, because you can put that work in and still not be tired. And you showed up every single day, and you were crucial to our success. You're a huge, huge part of it, and look, I'm even making you uncomfortable talking about you. So you, <laughs> you un maybe this is one thing, to your detriment is that you don't want the spotlight. You don't want the light shining on you. You just want to help everybody else do a great job. And so that's why probably at some point I forgot I got Danny because you were too busy helping everybody else. But I want to tell you that in this program, that is not forgotten. Okay, and it's going to take me a long time to replace you. And it's players like you that make championships happen. Okay, and so just because you're not being recruited right away doesn't mean that you don't belong there. You just have to understand that you are the guy that's going to go in there and push them over the top. And so you just have to keep working, keep working, and stay confident regardless of what obstacle you come across. Because you've already proved it, and we have the videos to show that you can play at the highest level. Thank you for all you've done, and this year you were voted All-Conference Honorable Mention. So well done with that. Babies. I saw one babies. <laughs> <laughs> Osvaldo Espinosa. <laughs> wow. Ozzy. The happiest guy I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, you gotta make it, you, you can't not smile, look. <laughs> Sorry, right, man, you are a legend. You are a legend. It's like, okay, um, what position can you not play? In the same way that I had um, Carlos Tevez in Guzman, I got another Iniesta kind of a, you know, superstar in you, another Tony Cruz. And there you are, and I put you to forward, center forward, no problem. Put you outside forward, no problem. Put you to center mid, no problem. This year, we were mixing it up and stuff, we played you at defensive mid, no problem. You're dropping in, no problem. I walk around the Grand Liga fields, and everybody goes, oh, you have Osvaldo, huh? Is Osvaldo playing this year? Oh, he's really good. Everybody knows you. Every oh, that guy's so good. Oh, yeah, that guy's just, uh, when you guys are playing, I want to come watch him. I mean, everybody knows you. I, I don't know what's going on. That's why I call um, La Colonia, I call it La Espinosa. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing it, man. I just, I just walk through.
know Ozzy. I know Ozzy. I know Ozzy. I know Ozzy. I know Ozzy. Okay. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I can't believe we have this much talent. I can't believe we have this much. I can't believe that such a superstar comes in such a smiling, happy, willing to do whatever it takes package. This year, I was using the first couple games to experiment with stuff, so I didn't even start you. And you're a sophomore, never missed a freaking minute. But still, you never complained, you never said a word, you, didn't, you just said, okay, and then you went in. And wherever you played, you were perfect. And then last year, I mean, I'll never get this out of my head when we were playing against Chafee. Remember that goal that Ozzy scored at Chafee? Where he like dribbled, like uh, four guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> Slalom through all of them and then just freaking pass it in the corner like it was nothing? That almost made it harder on me to coach the team because I sat back and go, oh my God, how are we going to lose? I mean, sometimes you guys, your, your talent, it actually messes me up as a coach because I, I get overconfident. I see it, you score a goal like that, and I think, I'm just going to sit here and not try not to mess this up because how good are we? Of course, we messed up and we lost that game, but we used it as a learning tool and we got better and better and better. But what I'm saying is that's how good you are. You are a freaking unbelievable player. And what's great about this team is that you just are just another one of the guys. And I want you to take that same attitude. I want you to take that same mentality. I want you to take that same skill level. And I want you to please bring it to another program and make them as lucky as we have been for the last two years. Please use your grades, that you get good grades, and move on and go wherever. And we'll figure out your financial aid and see if Santa Clara works. Or maybe another D1, because you belong at the top. Everybody belongs at D1 level in this room. If you can play for us, you can play Division One. Please, understand that. If you don't believe me, let's set up a scrimmage against a D1 team and then we'll see what happens. You can do it. All you have to do, though, is get the grades and go through the obstacles. And Ozzy, for sure, you, please, please, take what you have done here, take what you have proven, take the evidence that you have and go and find yourself a top program where you can maximize who you are as a student, as a person, and as a soccer player. Because I think you have a big future. Big, big future. This year, the um, coaches voted you first team all conference. Wow, <laughs> so just so everybody knows, like, what are you going to do? How are you going to get into school? You're going to make a highlight video if you can um, be nice enough to Tony. I think that's the best way. I was talking to Ivan Murkovich about all the talent we have here this year and um, coming out next year and whatever. What are you going to do? You are going to try and make a highlight video because that's really how the coaches see. I mean, you can say you scored this goal or you did this or you played this position. They don't really care. They get a million emails and phone calls. What you need to do is make a video and send them that video and get in there. And also we have contacts. So if you can organize your financial aid, if you can organize the rest of it, you will be able to make it. Okay? So please, put the work in and don't let your soccer collegiate career end here. Please move on to um, anywhere you want as long as you just get the grades and you get the applications in. And you put the video in the coach's hands so he can watch what I've been watching for two or three years and he'll know what I know and then you'll be signed up. Does that make sense, everybody? Please, please do that. Because look, don't be like Chips. Don't be like Tito. I told him, I told him, I told him, I told him, I told him. But it has to be them. It has to be them. It's their life. It's their choice. It's their interest. Where are they going to go to school? What are they going to study? What are they going to do? But it's just, you cannot wait. This community has this idea that if someone wants me to play, he'll call me or text me, and then I, he'll, I'll go help him out like if it's a grand league or a club team or some nonsense. But it doesn't work like that for college. College, you have to be a student, and a student has to apply to be a student. And so when you apply, then you get in the mix, and once you're in the mix, then they'll take you. Does that make sense? Then you'll get the phone calls and the text, and then you'll go help the guy out. But it, you have to take that first step. So please, use Tony, because we're very lucky to have um, Tony D here. Yes, Tony, are you there? Thank you for all you do, and um, I got something for you. A jacket when you are done. Okay, so actually, actually, let's make a bigger deal about that. Um, Tony, can you just walk up here? Can you leave that thing on? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, you can. Yeah. Come on, Tony, just don't kick the camera over. Come on up. All right, I know you don't like to be in front of the camera, okay? 
This is Tony D, the legend in front of the camera. You never <laughs> seen the Tony D show. Hey, thanks for everything you do, okay? You're getting these guys from Oxnard to all around the world, okay? Thank you, we really appreciate it. I got something for you afterwards, yeah, yeah. all right? <laughs> Speedy, come on up. Hey! <laughs> Man, Speedy, um, you got your own way of seeing the world. Huh? <laughs> he interprets things differently. I mean, like, um, I appreciate what you do. Speedy is a Cesc Fabregas type of player. Like a guy that is undervalued, but when you give him the keys to the bus, he will take you wherever you want to go. And he will control the game, he will score sometimes, defend sometimes, he does a whole bunch of stuff that you don't see and you are in control, right? That's what I, that's, every year I try and find somebody who's going to be that guy who's the pulse of the team. Every year I try and find that one guy that I can put in the midfield and it seems to everybody else that nothing is going on but you are in full control. And it's a special quality, especially, you know, when you're not the most physically powerful guy. The physically powerful guy is in the back, you know, just trying, just trying to hang on to the game. And it doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? The super fast guy is just sprinting around, chasing the world as the world goes by. And it doesn't make any sense. But the guy in the middle who sees all the pieces and sees all the personalities and sees all the action and who's going where and what's he going to do and what's going on and sees the mismatch over there, let's keep feeding the ball over there, sees the size difference, get a cross happening, sees the opportunity, you're not going to stop me, does a dribble out of nowhere. <laughs> Eight out of ten times it comes off. Nine and ten out of ten times. Diego and the guys text you uh, or Instagram you or whatever it is that, to show you like what the hell were you doing, right? <laughs> Don't come off all the time. But eight out of ten times nobody sees and five passes later we end up with a goal. Nobody understands that that's what's going on. So I'm, uh, the Jimmy, he's on his way to doing that. But you are a pro at it. When you're there and you're just knocking the ball side to side and then all of a sudden you're next to the center back. And then all of a sudden, you're over there next to the center forward. And all of a sudden, you're over there next to the right. What is going on in your mind? You're just setting them up. You're just playing the chess match. You're just handling it. And then boom. But if we went back along every single goal, we would see at some point in the link, in the sequence to the goal, Speedy was the initiator. At some point, we were going side to side. And at some point, Speedy went, now. And boom. Out, boom, over that, boom, some kind of combo, boom, something went in, boom, front door run, boom, goal. You're not the guy scoring, you're not the guy crossing, you're the guy in control. And then you're the guy staying in position so that they, when the goalie looks up, no transition. It's a special quality. It's undervalued, especially in a college team. You're not going to get a lot of joy, okay? But please keep playing, keep pushing, because the higher you go, the better levels of soccer you play, the more they appreciate that. The less they sub, the more the game is about patience and control and timing, you know? And it's a little bit of ole, that we have it, you don't, come and get it. The more you will shine, okay? You're a special player, special player, and um, I'm blessed to have, have coached you, okay? You ran the show, you, you were awesome. And uh, this year, the coaches voted you, it's second team all conference, and I'm disappointed with that because it should be first team. But they don't see what I see, and they don't see the stats. You know what I mean? They don't see a little guy. It doesn't matter. But, but you control the game, OK? Paul Scholes, Seth Fabregas. But still, it's something. And still, you have two championships. And still, you're on your way to big things. Hopefully, maybe Cal Lewis run or something like that, if they're lucky enough to get you. Because I think you can get a lot of stuff. You can do a lot of things on soccer field. And last year, you were you know, an outside back, and you've been playing forward. And anywhere you want, you're too good. Okay, so please don't give up. Keep going wherever you want to go and bring what you do to every game you play. Don't let them tell you to play different. Do what you do because it makes the whole world go around in real soccer. Okay, thank you and congratulations. Alex Garcia, come on up.
Alex. All right, so I said I had two Cristiano Ronaldo's. <laughs> Danny Pacheco was one, and Alex Garcia is second Cristiano Ronaldo. You were excellent up and down the wing all year long. And this year we mixed it up because they were ready for you and we had you playing in center mid sometimes. We had you playing outside back and coming up late. And you were perfect the entire time. You freaking took it to everybody. You scored crucial goals. You had crucial assists. You were there every single day and, you know, you believed not only in yourself, but you believed in the team and how far it could go all the time. And it rubbed off. It rubbed off on everybody. You know, if I had to, if I had one wish oh, for this season, I would say, don't be, you know, coming from a low income bracket and need to work on Black Freaking Friday and get your ass to practice and let's train so we can be ready. That kind of stuff. But I know you have to work. I know that Nike won't not let you work. I know that's just the stuff we have to deal with. That's just one of the obstacles that keeps us and keeps keeps us every year leaving a little bit on the table. But that's what I want every single person in this room to remember. And I want them to take that and use it as fuel so that when they're working there, they end up freaking owning the Nike store or whatever it is that they want to do. They're the best at it. You know, they're the best. And you really took it to heart every lesson that I tried to give you. Everything you, every time we were in the weight room, everything we tried to do, you tried your hardest to make it better. And it showed. It showed. This year, the defenses were so worried about Alex and Johnny that stuff coming up the middle was way more dangerous. And so sometimes you were a decoy. Sometimes you just had to make the assist. Sometimes you made the pass before the pass was the goal. Sometimes you just had to mark a guy. It didn't matter, but you did whatever had to be done every single time. You were perfect. I don't know how I'm going to find another guy. And this year I have two. I tried to convince Danny to play next year so I'd have him next year. But it was just so special having you guys both play this year. And so um, I'm, I'm just here to say thank you and good luck. And what I mean by good luck is please put the effort in to go someplace. I've already talked to you about some schools that you could go to. Please put the effort in to go Division One, survive their fitness plan, okay? And then do all the things that you did for us because you're a type of player that could be getting a draft two years. Why not? You get as physically fit as possible. You stop working eight days a week. You put your, uh, put your effort in the weight room. And then you just tone up what you do as a forward. Who knows, right? Because you've already proved that you have the base, the foundation. And so I think there's going to be big things. And I'm trying to make as many contacts as possible for players like you. Well done. And this year, um, you were voted first team all conference. Congratulations. Okay, I just want to tell everybody while we're doing the sophomores and stuff like that that they um, they changed the way that they I probably shouldn't have this recorded, but they changed the way that they the nominations go for um, All America individual awards. You usually just email in these nominations and it's like a thirty word, a thirty sixty word paragraph or whatever. Um, this year um, you have to go to the website and also input it. So you have to email and input it. And Clay and I did not get those in. We were in the playoffs, we had stuff was going on and all that stuff and whatever. And so we had our nominations, we emailed them in and but we didn't nominate through the computer system. So Alex was all American last year and he deserves to be all American this year along with four or five other guys in our program. And um, we left it on the table. So I'm sorry, you know, we were in the, the, the when it was due was right around the, um, it was some huge game, I don't remember. But anyway, we, I made sure the email went in just like I do every single year, and <coughs> so I apologize, okay? So that's, okay. that's what's happening, all right? It's just another award, but um, you guys deserve it, and the reason you deserve it is because um, I wanted you to use it to move on. The reason these awards matter is because I want you to write it down on some application, and I want you to move on. But the more I talk to these coaches, the more I realize they want to see this, they want to see the video, they want to see what Tony has, and they want you to get your grades and get in there. The, uh, the award is just like something that helps maybe notice a little bit. But Okay, so I apologize for that, and let's move on. Okay, so who do we got next? Okay. Um, 
Fanta, come on up. Hey. All right, Mr. Garcia. Okay, so um, Fanta is probably the best player in the country to play the least minutes. And that's my fault. I probably should have had you play ne next year uh, because your hand was hurt and um, you were trying to get your grades together and all the rest of it, but you are too excellent of a player as we've gone through to not put you on the team. I mean, when we were pushing for a state championship, we have so much talent and so much everything. How can I not put you on the team? It's just impossible. It's just impossible. It's just one of those things where, you know, if we hadn't put you on the team this year, we wouldn't have gotten past Long Beach. Because when JJ got exhausted, then, um, you know, you, who would have gone in? And if we don't get past Long Beach, we don't get past uh, the next team, West, Southwestern. West. And if we don't get past, past Southwestern, we don't get to play San Cerritos. And if we don't play Cerritos, and if we play, when we're playing Cerritos, if you don't go in for JJ and Mark 27, who's their best player on the best team in the technically the best team in the country. They won the California State Championship. So 27, that guy, uh, Cuevas, right? From the uh, Galaxy Academy, Academy or whatever academy he was part of. He's a real good player, right? And JJ was worn out, sticking with him, and they were rotating new forwards in to chase JJ and all the passing and stuff like that. We don't make it to penalty kicks. It's just, just, just a fact of life. And so, um, under, un unfortunately, we didn't get to have a Fanta season. When a Fanta season would have looked like you up top every single minute doing what Johnny did this year. And that would have happened. But it doesn't mean it can't happen at a four-year school. You get your grades. I've already talked to a bunch of coaches. And it will happen as long as you are able to tra transfer academically. Your financial aid package will allow you to go wherever. Okay? The reason you're up here is because I want to acknowledge the contributions that you made even though they were 10% of what 100% should be. If you were playing next year, 100% would have looked like probably All-American and everything else. And so you're going to have to understand that we left that on the table, but hopefully you can grab that at another program. Hopefully. So what I did is um, I got you this ball. I, I got you a soccer ball. Okay. And the reason is, is because um, I want you to keep playing. I want you to keep playing every day. I want you to keep training every day. I want you to keep putting up with jokers like me who are coaches and just trying to put all things together and forget that they got a superstar in their midst. Okay, I want you to keep going to school all the time so that you can continue to be eligible for whatever soccer team you want. And I want you to keep training and keep getting past all of the obstacles in your personal life so that you can move on to big things and you can be a draft pick just like Alex in two or three years and move on to whoever will pay you. And I want you to keep this ball and keep training with it all the time when you can so that you can get past all those obstacles and no matter what, you will still be an excellent soccer player at the end of it. Because you still are, you're still healthy, and even though we only got 10% out of you, you still got us to the brink of the Final Four. The brink. And if we get past that brink, because of what I saw Cerritos handling Mount, um, Mount Sac and Taft so easily, we could be state champions. And then the risk would have paid off completely. But this is the way life goes. Does that make sense? Does everyone understand? This is the way life goes. Yeah. What do you do? You just stop freaking trying? No, you try harder and harder and harder. You learn from it. And that's how close we were. And that's why I had to take the risk. Yes? And when you came back, I knew we were going to be real close. I knew it was going to be like an inch either way. And so that's why I had to have you on this team. I had to play, have you playing with the brothers that you grew up with. And I'm giving you this ball because you didn't get a first team all-conference, because you didn't get an All-American, because you didn't get a player of the year or whatever freaking nonsense award. But you are Fanta, and you are a legend. And if you really put your mind to it and keep going, even though you were one of the few guys that I've let slip through the cracks in terms of getting the maximum out of, there, out of them, you can go on and be a pro. A draft pick, a top player, a top person, a top student, and get out of all the situations you have to get out of. Does that make sense? So congratulations. Thank you for everything you've done. And here is a ball for you to keep on.
All right. Um, Elmer, come on up. You are one of a kind, Elmer. <laughs> one of a kind. Yeah. I was trying to figure out, when I think about Elmer, man, okay, let me, okay. The heart decides what it wants, right? And then the brain thinks, okay, well, we can maybe get it this way, we can maybe get it this way, but the soul, the, the soul goes, ugh, and just goes for it, right? The soul is the bravery, the mind is the brains. You're all soul. <laughs> you are all soul. <laughs> you have so much soul. You just you just go for whatever you see. You have you have unbelievable. You have no fear. You have no fear. You are brave through any situation, through everything. You would lead a troop in and out of a war without a, without a problem. I mean, I, I mean, if anyone knows Elmer's story that Al and I were lucky enough to hear, it's an unbelievable story. And I don't know how you fell in to this program, but. Man, what freaking player. <laughs> okay, now, Elmer did, showed up every single year this year. Am I right? Every single day. Every single day. Every single day. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, okay, now I've seen it all, because Elmer's correcting my English. <laughs> Elmer, how am I gonna re how am I gonna replace Elmer? How, I, you know, the, the reason I put I brought Elmer and Fads up together is because you guys, you know, when I think of one, I think of the other. You guys are, are good friends and uh, brothers, and and you know, you you protect Fanta, you protect the rest of these guys, you protect a lot of them. You step up in front, you take the heat. Something goes down, Elmer's right up there, taking the blame. If there's blame to be taken, he takes it. If there's trouble, he's the one right there. He is, is a leader is not enough of a word. He is a stand-up guy. You know, the kind of guy that when you're on the street, you know, you get, you get these people and they got titles and they got money and they got a nice car or whatever. But, I, but when you're on the street and you're in the heat of like whatever and you're in some alley or something, the person that you want next to you on your side handling the situation is Elmer. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, like, you're not going to get, like, all the top awards and stuff like that, but the quality dude, when you go down to their soul and you go, who is a guy who's going to do the right thing when I really need it? Who is the guy I need next to me when I really need it? Elm. I mean, it does, I, I don't even want to get into the soccer because you had an unbelievable year. You scored goals. You were clearing the ball off the line. You played center back. You played left back. You were up and down the wing. You were freaking... You were... Perfect. You were perfect. And you came to every single practice. Ross, what needs to be done? And you were grabbing stuff out. You didn't wait for other people. You just led by example. You didn't, I, asked, I said you could delegate. You never delegated. You grabbed people. You brought them with you. And together we went and did it. Move goals. Who's moving goals? Get over here. Who's screaming and shouting? You turned every single thing that we did into fun. No matter how painful it was, in the weight room or whatever, it was fun. No matter who was on your team, they were trying their best. You turned a negative attitude into a positive attitude millions of times. You turned a negative situation into a positive situation. And not just a positive situation, like, like a, an overwhelmingly positive situation. Millions of times. It's unbelievable. And anyone who knows your life story sees you turning a negative situation into an overwhelmingly positive situation. I, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm searching for words to try and come up with what what we have been blessed with in this group with you and I'm just hoping that you can overcome the odds and continue with your education Ivan was telling me about a program at Fresno Pacific University where he played where AB 540 students can get you know a full scholarship and then you can go play for them but the scholarship doesn't come from the soccer it comes from the um, like the, the school you know what I mean because of AB 540 they're helping like Dream Act people for that so maybe that's the situation, right? Yeah. And then I just know you will go there and turn that program into an unbelievable program. Or wherever it is that you land next. But I want you to fight through the fact that did you not work all day long today? Right? You worked all day long today. 
And usually I get pissed off. I, in, the, in the first times when I was there with this group, wherever they are, the other, the other, the other, the 2005 group, when I was, when I was mad, you know, because these guys would show up late. They would show up late. And I was like, what the hell's going on? And these guys have no, no discipline. It's not discipline. They were just getting off their jobs and they were sprinting over as fast as they can. It's not discipline. They were just picking up their little brother from school and they were getting here as fast as they could. They wouldn't miss soccer for their lives once I realized. And so that's why this year on Sundays, we're not starting practice until Elmer gets here. Yeah, we'll knock the ball around. We'll do some small sided stuff. We'll do some stuff. But we're not starting until Elmer gets here because Elmer is the soul of our team. He is the soul of our team. It's unbelievable. And you are probably, I don't know your family, but you're probably the soul of your family. And you're probably the soul of your neighborhood. And <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I'm just speculating. And so I'm asking you, I am asking you to allow all of us to help you. Let me know what I can do to help you become the soul of a university program. And be the, become the soul of a classroom at a top university where you're learning whatever it is you want to learn and then become the soul of a company or wherever you can be a leader. Because every time you get your presence into a situation, you will bring life to it and you will make it successful. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not lying here, okay? You could be anything you want to be, a leader, whatever. Just make sure that you go through whatever you have to go through. And remember everything you did for these guys and with these guys so that you can get over the obstacles. Because you're going to face obstacles, I already know, and I know it takes you a lot. And when you first came, Elmer had to come up with a, you know, some money to get a freaking um, x-ray because he had to get covered. Remember that last year? Remember? And you had to miss the first bunch of practices and first bunch of games because you weren't cleared to play. But you found a way. You pushed past all the guys who said, no, no, next year all the time. No, you, you found a way to get on the team and came up with a substantial amount of money somehow, which I knew was very difficult for you. And so it's just by seeing this happen, that's just one small example that I would share. I'm not going to share the rest. But by seeing this happen, I know you can overcome. And I also know that you have built a freaking friendship, yeah. more than a friendship, with a whole bunch of people who will help you through whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we're here, from you in the, here for you in the same way that you've been here for us the entire time. Thanks. And so a second team all-conference award doesn't do what you've done for us justice, <laughs> but it's something. And so thank you, Elmer, and well freaking <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Johnny Lopez. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about the coaches. Uh, Sorry. All right, no, Don't go to the coaches. Stay around here. Um, anyway, the coaches, I'm giving you these hats. Okay. So, Alan Wiedermeyer. Okay, Alan, I think you came into your own this year as a coach. Okay, you stepped up. You took control of not just a warm up, but practices. And it's so huge to have your expertise on the staff because when Yoshi's not around, you can see how vital it is to know exactly what's going on with the guys. And it's not just your presence on the soccer field as a, as a leader and a trainer, but it's also your ability to relate to all the guys and talk to them and then let me know what's going on and how I can help. And so I wanted to either give you this hat or let you know that we're going to get it from Extreme Soccer. And, and same for you, Brian. And, um, but I also wanted to take this moment to acknowledge what you've done and, and thank you. That's right, brother. Ali. Brother. So, uh, there's a hat in Halloween. Okay, and also, um, this is for your son. Okay? Your son. I know he's going to be a star. Okay? And also, um, so. Um, Manuel Neuer? <laughs> he's, he's, he's a, his son, he's yeah. yeah, he's a little Manuel Neuer. <laughs> He'll be starting for Barcelona in like five years. <laughs> at, at eight years old. <laughs> I, um, Brian, I, I'm, moving, I'm trying to move fast through this because, you know, there's a lot to say, right? We're in this room, and like I said earlier, we should be in a gigantic ballroom, you know, with all kinds of stuff. But we have to remember we're only 
on a journey. We're only on one step of the way. So I'm hoping that by in this room, we can understand that there's so much more out there that we have to go and grab. And when we go out there and we grab things in the, in the, the rest of the world, I want you to remember that you're doing it not just for yourself, but for the people that are with you in this room and have been with you through every war and battle that we've gone through over the last few years. Yes? And that you're only a phone call or a text message away from somebody who can help you overcome whatever it is you're trying to overcome. Or someone who can help you celebrate. Now, remember, we are remembering that partying is different than celebrating. Celebrating means you earn something. Partying just means that you're just wasting time and distracting yourself from the fact that you have not, you got no goals, you got no ha nothing happening. You're just, it's just a, just a way of distracting yourself. Partying, just drinking, messing around, you know, whatever. It doesn't make any sense. You want to achieve, dominate, achieve, dominate, achieve, and then celebrate each time you achieve something. And so when you are, when you are celebrating, include us because of what's happening. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this with Brian is because since Brian joined the staff as the full-time assistant, we have been doing a lot of celebrating because he has done so much from a goalkeeping and a defense standpoint that he has balanced out what I do. And so I, of course, always want to just attack, have the ball the entire time, and try and score as many goals and create. But Brian brings balance and reality to that idealism. And so we are a great team. It's unbelievable. And uh, hopefully I'll be somewhere else when your son is gold enough to be goalie. But if not, I'll just start handing him soccer balls right now and maybe he'll play for us when he's um, <laughs> so now, you know? Because I know he's going to have the same character that you've had all this time. And so I look forward to wherever the future takes us, still being friends and still doing a great job. So there's a hat on the way for you. And I'll see you guys. Thanks a lot. The legend. Okay, Johnny. Johnny, I know we give Johnny a hard time, okay, but Johnny, from my point of view, is the perfect recruit. The perfect recruit. Okay, and, and it's not just, I know this, I, I knew this last year, but I know this now because every freaking college program in the western United States has contacted me about Johnny Lopez. What's happening with Johnny Lopez? What's Johnny Lopez going to do next? Do you have any Johnny? I'm like, it's like one of those movies, you know, where you have the quarterback and the freaking coach is just inundated with all this stuff, you know, and I wish I could get a shoe contract out of it or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't, you know, um, but you have been, and the reason is, is you're the perfect recruit. And what I'm talking about is when you recruit a player, what do you want from them? You want Technical ability, of course. You want athleticism, of course. Okay, Johnny is 10 out of 10 in both of those. You want um, someone who's disciplined is going to show up every day. 10 out of 10. You want somebody who's going to implement your game plan and not question it, not argue with it, just do, okay, that's what you want me to do? Perfect, no problem. You want someone who, even though he's a star, will get along with the rest of the guys and, you know, support and be patient and work with them all the time. I mean, in, all, in every category I could possibly mention, you are 10 out of 10. It's, it's perfection. Because you bring so much dynamism to the game, doing so much, and, and, and yet you never cause a problem. And usually when you get a player of Johnny's caliber, and you guys have known, you've played with other stars before, right? <clears throat> when you get a player, they usually bring the team down. You have to like choose between them and the team. And you can't get them to fit. You can't get them to fit. Well, on this team, we have a lot of stars. And they're all like you. They all want what's best for the team first. And it's amazing. It, it, I mean, it's amazing. I've been around a lot of different teams, a lot of different places. And to have such talented human beings want to do what's best for the team first and always support their brothers before them, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Okay, so this year we had Johnny um, walk us to the championship. Was it too easy for you, or was it hard? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Smart answer. Smart answer. It was not easy. It was not easy. We had to work. 
Guys were double teaming you. Guys were triple teaming you. A coach, every time you got the ball, would scream, he's left footed, he's going that way. Every time you would move this year, they would say, watch him. Hey, did you guys notice? Yeah. Did you ever see a back four go from a flat back four to a pile of guys, you know, circle around? It was like they were trying to catch a freaking lost cat or something. And everyone was like just chasing you like this. The entire defense would just go flying over to the other side. And we tried all kinds of different variations to get you more open. You know, and, and, and it was good that we had Jaime coming up because Jaime scored some of the goals. And the thing that I liked best about your play was when everybody was at your mercy and for sure there was like a 70% chance that if you shot, you're going to score. This year and last year, you would dish. And then the guy would have open that. One example would be the game we played at um, Santa Monica which was a huge game. Mission messed up at Santa Monica. They're a, very, they're a better team than, they, um, than their record showed, right? And we were having a tough time of it. It was back and forth, and it's a tough field to play on. And you were in behind, playing, and then you could have scored. You probably could have scored. You had the goalie, maybe five hole, maybe you were going far post or something, because Guzman had slipped a guy and then played you a perfect little pass, mm -hmm. and then boom, you're in. What happens? Out of the corner of your eye, you find Jaime. Jaime goes his back post, and he gets the open net, no goal. And that's what separated us. That's what separated us. They had a bunch of chances on that basketball court of a field, and they didn't have a star who was willing to play for the team. And that's priceless. It's crucial. And then when it mattered, when it need, well, not when it mattered, it always mattered, but when it when it was needed, you stepped up and then went and scored the goal, like Santa Barbara. Bam. Told you are going to be a king. You said, today I'm a king. Boom. And you walked out there, and from the first minute, you were deadly. And what a goal to start us off with, and what a goal to finish the game with. Perfect. And that set us on our, set us on our way. And these are, these are small little moments that I can think of, but if I really wanted to go down every game, I could think of a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff that separates us. And it's no reason, it's, it's no wonder that every college program wants you. I know the future is possible professional tryouts and see if you can get into a team. And I believe that you can make it. The only thing a coach needs to do is have an idea in his head of how he wants the team to play and then put you into one of those pieces that make the team go and tell you how he wants that piece to go and you will do it perfectly because you are that capable and you are that willing to do whatever. And so if you are fortunate to find a tryout situation where you can find a coach who will ask you to implement anything, left fullback, right mid, left mid, center mid, forward, whatever, I believe that you will be able to implement it perfectly. And I believe that the only reason you haven't become a pro in the past is because you've just never come across a coach who was able to verbalize how he his vision for the team. Mm -hmm. And if he could have verbalized it and told you, or showed you even in the practice, you would have done it perfectly. And we would never have been fortunate to have you here. So I'm glad that that never happened, but you and I are gonna be searching for somebody to make the most of you. And what I want you to do is also promise me that if it doesn't come along this off season, you will continue with school. And continue going to school, overcoming the challenges of the classes, and then take up a position with some scholarship to whichever school you would like to go to, because they all want you, and continue preparing for the next pro opportunity. Because yet, maybe we haven't found the coach who has a vision. Because I